uh, for many, um, this feature does work. So just a quick disclaimer, we are recording the session. I think uh, one of the participants, Sebastian, mentioned that it's uh, a nice feature for transparency reasons and also for documentation purposes, so that in uh, all of those who can't participate in these uh, webinars can, um, can document this themselves and look at the recording. So if there aren't any objections, uh, voila, we'll also record this session. Um, the objective today, as I already mentioned, is really to uh, focus on how we propose to deal with um, the open GitHub issues in regards to the core business and core public organization vocabulary. As always, voila, uh, thanks again for uh, creating all of the issues. It will be uh, I would say there's a lot of content, uh, so we really need to make sure that we um, focus on the essentials. So first of all, I'll give the, the floor to my colleague Pavina, who will recall a little bit the context or the global context of the whole revision process that we started a couple of months ago and that will finish uh, around Christmas. And then we'll do the deep dive on uh, actually the details of the discussion. So, um, as always, please unmute, uh, please keep your microphone muted. Uh, if you want to intervene, which we hope you'll do, please put your question or your comment in the chat. And then Max, uh, Emidio, Pavlina or myself, at the appropriate time, we will give you the floor. This is, this is just to steer the uh, discussion. So, without any further ado, I'll hand the floor to Pavlina, my colleague, uh, to introduce the global context. Thank you, Seth. Uh, good morning uh, uh, to all. Uh, it is uh, always a pleasure to have you uh, uh, on board uh, during our uh, uh, webinars. Uh, as uh, you may all uh, know, uh, the um, revision of uh, the core vocabulary has started early this uh, year. Um, uh, today, uh, um, we are going to tackle core business and the core organization. We slightly uh, change uh, the, the sequence of uh, uh, the combination of uh, vocabularies uh, to be tackled uh, because uh, we uh, found uh, closely related and uh, um, interchanged uh, issues uh, in uh, for that uh, were related uh, to core and business and the core organization. This is the reason why during our previous uh, uh, webinar we tackled the core version and the core uh, location uh, together. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so you are all aware of uh, uh, the um, the definition of uh, core vocabulary. So, uh, the intention of uh, this uh, um, effort of uh, revising uh, core vocabularies is uh, to create a major release. The reasons uh, for this is uh, where the accumulated uh, uh, issues uh, that uh, were uh, um, uh, posed into uh, submitted into GitHub, but also uh, to uh, have uh, um, uh, consolidation and uh, of uh, all core vocabularies. As you may already know, core, uh, the uh, core vocabularies uh, were created uh, during uh, um, the years, uh, perhaps, uh, in, uh, how, in uh, uh, different points on, on the time and uh, perhaps in a, 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 a quite fragmented uh, way. So, uh, during this uh, uh, major uh, release, uh, uh, what uh, we're trying uh, to uh, try to do is uh, to have a consolidated uh, revision of uh, core uh, vocabularies, uh, uh, taking under consideration other vocabularies uh, such as uh, CPSV, AP, uh, CCCV, and uh, try uh, to create a global uh, uh, diagram, a consolidated diagram, and uh, uh, to see whether we have any inconsistencies uh, between uh, those uh, vocabularies. So, uh, uh, we're trying, we are trying uh, to uh, address your comments into GitHub, created a consolidated uh, diagram, along with trying to improve our uh, definition and our, uh, in our uh, vocabularies uh, by trying uh, to address uh, data uh, modeling definition, improve our definition as well as uh, to uh, create, uh, to improve our uh, serialization. Having said that, next slide, please. 
uh, we are trying to. We have a uh, 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 during the, uh, during autumn uh, we have the third uh, third webinar in October uh, where we tackle the core passion and the core allocation. Uh, today we are trying we are going to tackle um, uh, the core business and the core organization. But our aim is uh, to have a final. Uh, webinar the 2nd of uh, December in order to reach a consensus uh, by the end of December and the publish to provide official release uh, by January uh, 2022 in order to um, to uh, provide the major the the, 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 the major release uh, by next uh, year. Uh, uh, in, to do this, we needed to um, uh, to tackle the forty five issues that uh, overall appeared, uh, which requires uh, more than uh, uh, fifty uh, changes uh, proposed. Uh, next slide, please. So. Uh, in order to do this, uh, we, are, uh, we do not uh, forget uh, the fact uh, and the original, uh, the initial objective of the definition of our core vocabularies uh, uh, that is uh, that core vocabularies are simplified, reusable, and extensible data models uh, that capture the fundamental characteristic of a data entity in a context neutral and syntax neutral fashion. Having said that, next slide, please. Uh, we try to keep uh, things simple. Um, uh, we try to see whether and if I needed uh, uh, to extend uh, our vocabulary in order to support the complex uh, user cases uh, based on the number of issues that are proposed and uh, potential uh, to uh, in uh, during our future work uh, to see whether we need. Uh, uh, to extend our core vocabularies uh, in order uh, to uh, tackle agreed an agreed set of uh, more complex uh, use cases. That's why we encourage you to provide us any uh, use cases in order to see whether uh, uh, those uh, use cases uh, are uh, are common uh, to uh, to a significant uh, portion of uh, the participants. Uh, and uh, uh, member uh, states. Next, next slide, slide, please. So, I, in order uh, to do this, I pass the floor uh, to my uh, to my colleague Emilio uh, Stanis, uh, who is going uh, to uh, tackle uh, every issue that I was uh, uh, put into GitHub. Emilio, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paulina. Um, by the way, I saw already one. Um comment in the chat passing through um, but I cannot it's too small um, oh, may I ask, yeah may I ask uh, the question I am the first time here in this uh, group so maybe uh, you have already answered the question are there any general design rules for uh, core vocabulary and uh, are these uh, rules available? What I mean is, for example, a design rule which says um, do not use choices, do not use inheritance, use only um, an enumeration of, of uh, data fields something like that, which uh, uh, can be helpful for translating core vocabularies into W3C uh, uh, schema. Um, are there such rules and uh, where can I find them? I can already reply. Uh, basically, the rules are in preparation because those rules that you mentioned indeed are concerning XML schema, W3C XML schema. Uh, so far, the core vocabularies is mainly expressed in uh, its form of RDF. There, but we don't indeed, uh, the intention is indeed to create and to formalize such rules. And so they are in, progress, in preparation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I did see and to complement to this, I would like to add the fact that uh, 
uh, on a higher level. Uh, uh, addressing also Anna's uh, comment, uh, we are trying uh, to uh, find, uh, we, uh, we are proposing uh, specific data modeling rules uh, to be uh, followed, and we have a, a dedicated issue uh, on this um, uh, by a, uh, inviting uh, member state uh, participants of the working group uh, to uh, uh, put their comments or to add to comment on the, the data modeling uh, uh, modeling rules uh, regarding definitions uh, that uh, we are uh, proposing uh, so that uh, we uh, can finalize uh, them and uh, to say that SEMIC uh, uh, is following uh, regarding the definition a uh, specific uh, uh, agreed uh, set of rules. We will see it, uh, you will see it during the presentation. Yes. Maximum, to add something? No, I saw someone raising a hand, but I don't see it anymore. So uh, please continue. Okay, I go. Yes, indeed. Um, thank you, Paulina. And the for the next uh, basically uh, at least uh, ten minutes, uh, we're going to see uh, the ch general changes. So these are common changes that uh, apply not only to the cooperative that we, we talk today, um, but uh, let's say as an impact also on other. Um, so there are three main of them. Uh, the first one is the representing the vocabulary in UML and HTML. So these affect uh, for today basically the two issues on corporate uh, organization and core business. Uh, the idea is basically um, to uh, display, to represent the, such vocabularies also in HTML format. So they, it's possible to consult the vocabulary not only in their own expression, but also via HTML specification. It, you see in the, on the bottom side, basically two screenshots, one from core business and corporate organization vocabulary that can already be consulted. Uh, and where the, basically the same vocabulary is expressed in UML inside the HTML page and also uh, via, via textual uh, description. So we are working on this because that's a tool chain that basically um, allows to generate from the data model also the HTML specification. And so this can be applied to all different core vocabularies. Okay, um, I go next. Same here, um, together with the design rules that uh, we applied to Frank, we are also working on a clear way of uh, for the definitions of each terms on the core vocabularies. Uh, this affects different rules in the as you can see from CPV and core business vocabulary. Uh, but in the idea, and we already done it basically providing on GitHub, yeah, uh, we provide already a link on GitHub where such rules are published. So it's already public and comments are welcome. Uh, so you could open basically issues on GitHub uh, saying that if there is any rule that, for example, the definition uh, that cannot uh, doesn't fit well, for example, or for certain terms, we can look at it as a reference to our, towards uh, the GitHub um, rules. So your, feed, uh, your feedback is more than welcome, of course. And the last one on the uh, on the conflate or basically having unified views, you know already that some of you already know that um, the core vocabulary have been developed, uh, so you have different views from each core vocabulary, but let's say uh, what we want to show here, indeed, clarify the relationship among the core classes. Um, uh, there is a core person vocabulary, a core public organization, and also a, a, um, say a core business on legal entity. So here in this diagram, for example, you, you see it's already a way to show the relation between them. So uh, in this case, in the diagram here, you have the two concepts, the fourth person and fourth organization and the and top uh, part where all of them are subclasses of fourth agent. So fourth agent has been uh, the, the main basically superclass for those uh, entities. And uh, on the part of the uh, diagram, you see on the on on bottom right also the <laughs> concept of legal entity and public organization, which are subclasses in turn from over uh, for organization. So that's uh, a diagram that allows to see, basically clarify the relationship among all of them. And so these are the three points that, um, 
let's say the three slides or the UML, the diagrams aside. Um, so if you have any other comment, uh, please let me know. Or we can talk now or we go on the next section. Any questions? No questions in the chat? I see. So I. Okay. Anna? Question from Anna. The relationship between a formal organization and org organization in your previous slide. I think that's correct. Yeah. Org formal organization is a subclass of org organization. That's it's to the right of it. I can, I'm not able to display the chat anymore. I can I can see your slide. Yeah, yeah, but the chat I was hoping to see the chat as well to in order to be able to reply. But okay, if uh, if you can see it, uh, Max, it's okay. Oh, it's already good. So Anna says that uh, org formal organization is also a subclass of org organization. And Georgia notes that org organization is yeah. equivalent to probe organization. Okay. Uh, this diagram has to be. Uh, yeah. So you have to update, update the diagram. Now. Okay. The diagram. Okay. Thank you. Take a note of it. Okay, now in uh, we have two basically uh, sections here. Uh, the first one on the core business, and the next one will be on a, a core, uh, public organization. For each of the next slides, we will see uh, some of the issues with the proposition to of um, which we sh uh, we can agree on, of course, disagree. Um, here I recall uh, the core business vocabulary version two point zero. Um, okay, I see. I see it coming over. But, um, so the where the main uh, entity of the core business vocabulary is, is the legal entity with different classes related to. Um, we already tackled some. Uh, there was already an issue that we already tackled on uh, issue seven, so which could be already closer on this. I go now step by step on all the issues that are related to, to core business. So the, in this slide. We talk about uh, there is a um, say we talk about the uh, constraints on the core recoveries. Uh, it's an issue that affects in different ones from core business, but also other recoveries. It's generic uh, as well. Uh, in this case, um, the idea is uh, the general idea is that uh, core recoveries don't do not have constraints. So uh, cardinality expressed into the core recovery should not be there. Uh, uh, so it's the way indeed to reuse it as much as possible the core vocabularies. Second thing, if uh, organizations want to reuse such core vocabulary, they can create an application profile where, uh, uh, let's say, uh, constraints can be applied. And this is already, uh, let's say, quite agreed or already in, in different issues uh, with other core vocabularies. So that's for uh, core business what is was left over already. There was a question in the chat. Yeah. Yes, from please. Jacques. Uh, what is the relationship between a business and a public organization? Is a business always private? In the we uh, in the business there, um, we uh, we uh, will tackle this because the on talk on, we will talk about the concept of. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, we were talking about. Uh, legal entity, which normally it's intend to be a private one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but let's say we will talk also. Let's say this kind of discussion. I'm pretty sure will come over when we discuss also the core public organization. If you yeah. want, since you want to see the relation between them. Uh, and then one question that I can answer from Shaq. Uh, there is a decision to use business English. So why formal organization instead with a Z instead of organizing with an S? And that's because we're actually referring to something that already exists. And the org ontology is a W3C recommendation and W3C 
uses US English. So uh, the, uh, the, the formal name of that class is with a Z because that is how W3C has defined it. No, That's, indeed. Okay, you can continue. Um, uh, this is um, th these issues, the two issues, 10 and 11, basically uh, concern uh, the relation between a legal entity and its own classification. Uh, uh, the classification is concerning the, uh, the company type and the company activity. Um, here, uh, basically, uh, we say that uh, the company type it should be meant to be a, uh, the legal form type. No? So uh, the idea is indeed um, and as well also for the company activity is being renamed to legal entity activity. So in a way we express better um, the property. So you see on the left, how is it? So company activity and uh, company type. And on the right hand side, we changed to legal entity activity in legal form type. So it be they better express, uh, let's say the naming, it better express what is the, what is their meaning. Of course, this has an impact, uh, um, anyway, impact on the OURI, so th that we need to put a, a, in strategy basically a deprecation for certain property uh, which already exists. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the way we are basically addressing the, the request to express the legal form, let's say, of the, from the legal entity side. Thank you, John. Okay. So I go next. Uh, I see a wait. Uh, I see a comment from Natalie Murik, uh, uh, Max. Yes, there's a comment. There's a comment from uh, Natalia Murik, uh, but she refers to the things on the left, the company activity. Yeah. Uh, and that was actually changed, uh, Natalie, because indeed there was a confusion about that so this is now legal entity activity so it's clear that it's for this legal entity and cecile says in procurement we need to distinguish public and private organizations uh, both from organization so that is indeed why we have the two uh, vocabularies one for the uh, legal entity and one for the uh, public uh, organization now, we can argue about the names of that. About the public there is an issue for that. But that is uh, something that uh, is uh, based, that is related to the definition of those classes. And we'll get to that. Okay. But sorry, can I, can I have a say? So, but in fact, we need to be able also to interchange them. So they are, sometimes there are, we need to be able to consider them as, as um, to, to join them because they are, that's why we have uh, made them uh, stemming. So inheriting from uh, the same concept at, at organization. Yeah, but that's we, we don't consider that they're completely different. No, no, yeah. but that's the, actually the core vocabulary doesn't say that those things are necessarily different. It's just that the core vocabulary gives you a number of properties to describe an organization as a public organization and as a legal entity. Now, it might be yeah. that in some cases there is an organization where both apply, and that's possible. There's not, not a problem to uh, mix uh, and match okay. those vocabularies uh, according to your need. Yeah. So for you, legal entity is a private one. Well, is the a legal business? Ent yes. Or is yes. Okay. Yeah, but since they also uh, come from the main class, uh, let's say at the end they they are subclasses, huh? or the, the main class, uh, you could basically uh, use them. Strong. And Georgia says the public organization is also a legal entity. It, it, well, of course, it depends on the type of the, on their form. Mm. Um, so the, there are some uh, differences. The, some, uh, there are many things can be in, uh, in common. Huh? Um, we have to be careful that we are not conf uh, uh, confusing the English words like legal entity with the definition, the class 
in the vocabulary. Because yeah, there is always, you can always, always argue that something is a legal entity because it exists and is registered somewhere. But I think we need to look at the definitions of the classes and the kinds of properties that you need to describe uh, those different classes uh, with, the, uh, with the words in English. Because there is something that you have in your mind behind what you think is a legal entity. But I think we need to look very strictly at the definitions of the classes. And that's the Bart continues that discussion of saying may, may not always be a public organization, may not always be a legal entity, and we don't want to get into that discussion. We have two classes with a, a separate set of properties, and you can apply them whenever you need them. But I, I don't think we need to go into this because also there is a difference between different countries about what people would call a legal entity and how you would register things, and we don't want to go into that discussion and just concentrate on the classes that we have and the properties that you can use for them. And Mihai says you won't, don't want to have a legal entity, uh, you want to maybe use commercial entity, but I don't think we know we want to go into that. I think we have an, a, a label for the class and then we have a definition for it. And I uh, Cecile wants to see the definition in the chat. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. Okay, I need to has it. The able to transact businesses typically registered with a body able to confer legal status, such as national business register. Okay. Okay. Let's let's just continue, and we we note sure. the issue about the definition of those two classes, and then uh, we see if we can solve that issue through the definitions of the two. Okay. Okay, so please continue. Yeah. Um, the, uh, in this issue, we talk about the uh, formal organization uh, description. Um, the request indeed is to change the description of formal organization in the documentation, uh, since it comes from the organization ontology. Uh, indeed, as we see in this in the diagram. So, the current description is an organization which is organized in the world at large, in particular in legal jurisdiction, with, with associated rights and responsibility. Um, what is uh, basically we propose there is that to leave the description as it is, because the, uh, the current reuse per se of the URI of the formal organization express such prominence, basically. So we are already reusing a description from the other, um, the, from the org ontology, the organization ontology. And, uh, and this is also evident from the HTML documentation, where we stated that, that, that it comes from organization ontology. So, um, say if it, that is for you, uh, uh, it's fine for you. Let's say uh, I think I, I was wrong in the writing which position. Um, we can go forward on the same. I have Comment sorry, from... sorry, can I intervene here? Yes. This is Georgia. Hi. I'm getting confused. Uh, sorry about that. Because I'm getting confused with the different terms legal entity, business uh, organization, formal organization, and so on. You have shown the diagram at the beginning, the, yes. the, the general one. Okay. I think that in, in that diagram, um, we should. Uh, Put like something like uh, okay, so we have the, the, the fourth agent, okay, and then we have uh, the org organization, uh, um, and then we have a formal organization there yeah. that can be divided in public organization, which is a formal organization, uh, especially in, according to the definition that Bert included here, and then yeah. we have business, right? Um, Correct. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, well, business is uh, uh, the the private part of that. Of that, I I wouldn't use legal entity because it's misleading from my perspective. Because as also other people here said, 
uh, legal entities also, uh, public organization can be also legal entity. So I would say simply that we have org organization, formal organization divided into public organization and uh, the business, the private one, okay? And I think this is uh, a general way to model it. And at the level of the formal organization, or probably at the organization level, I don't know, pro probably at the formal organization, you have the legal form type that you included in the legal entity connection with the, the scope concept, probably. Because I think that the legal form type is also, uh, um, can be also applied to the public organization. For example, the legal form of a ministry or um, or a region or a municipality are all legal forms, okay? Like a, in a private world, like um, a, a business, a company that is, uh, uh, there are different types of companies according to their legal forms, uh, okay, type. So I think that that property is more general that can be applied to both public and private. So it can be included in the general diagram. Well, I, I wouldn't use the, the term legal entity only for the business. Let's use business uh, if business is only private part. I think, well, what you're saying, Georgia, I think is, is uh, uh, very well acknowledged. Uh, and it's something that we've been struggling with. Uh, we okay. you know that in the previous version, it was called the business. And then people mm -hmm. started to argue that business was not the right name because we didn't uh, have a good definition for it. So we came up with the, uh, because a business in the definition uh, now uh, talks about registration in a business register, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we thought that legal entity would be a better name. Now, if the legal entity, if there is a connotations that people have a legal entity, they're saying that public organization can also be legal entities, then we might need to change the name of that. But what I don't think that you're correct in is that public organizations have a, uh, are legal entities in the same way. Uh, ministry doesn't have a uh, company type, for example, or a legal entity type. It's just a public organization. It's been established by law, but that's different from having a uh, legal uh, registration somewhere. Uh, and that's something that we've been struggling with. And I think uh, if, if we can't get uh, the the, the uh, uh, consensus on that, uh, then we maybe want to change back to business uh, or to private entity. Uh, any definition, any any label that we have, I think people can say yes, but, and that's something mm -hmm. that I think we're we're struggling with a little bit. So my uh, idea would be to concentrate on the definition. And then we can have a poll saying, do we want to call it a private entity, a business or a legal entity? But that is something I think we want to, uh, this is a discussion that can go on for hours, of course. So <laughs> maybe we can go yeah. for the definition of the entity and then see what best label fits. Also saying that the label is just a placeholder uh, for the definition. So I, I okay. Okay. we shouldn't confuse people by using the words that imply things to people, but we also cannot get a word that everybody will agree on. Uh, but uh, that's uh, for that reason, I think the definition is more important than the label at the moment. Okay, yeah. okay. but anyway, Max, just uh, a comment. Uh, the public organizations, at least in my country, they are um, registered in an official uh, Italian register. Um, so they have uh, a legal form type defined there, which is the type of public organization, as I said before. So yeah. um, I don't know in other countries, I'm, I'm reading in the chart that also other in Denmark, they, the public organization are registered in the business register. Okay, so we, uh, we really needed to understand like uh, here the, the overall uh, scenarios in the different member states probably. Right. Thank you, George. The, yeah, anyhow, uh, the, let's say we were talking about simply the, the association of, of the description of the formal organization, but there is indeed the issue later on on that uh, part of the vocabulary. Um, we'll come back in anyhow. The, um, yeah, what I'm highlighting is the uh, simply the, the legal entity property uh, in the past 
um, a property was created, uh, which is called need a legal entity to go from any, uh, let's say, RDF resource to a legal entity part. The thing is, the, indeed, the meaning of such a relation is not clear. Uh, in a way, there are doubts that to say it doesn't mean that it's is a part as a part or is part of. So, as indeed the, the meaning per se um, uh, is is not clear, and also linking, we are linking to anything to a legal, legal entity. We propose indeed to remove such a broad relation, making it consistent with other convocables, because we don't have even such a way in other convocables. Um, do this removal has an impact on your strategy? So, because we need to indeed deprecate such property on, on it. So, do you, would you agree indeed with this proposition? Unless there is indeed a real case. Of... But I think that it's very difficult to discuss on this if we do not agree with the with the the classes, the concepts that are first uh, uh, set. You know, so you you yeah. you keep. Uh, you keep you keep the the high the main business entities and then we have to decide on on the detail the predicates but we we are still struggling so for yeah. me I, i'm really struggling so indeed we but as we said we this is the the part of legal entity person we will treat it on the definition side yeah whatever is basically the the legal entity it can be even core business yeah but indeed the the idea is we just have now a property that points to a legal entity such property could even happen to be, let's say, in the core business, uh, let's say, uh, in a core public organization. Um, we don't have such things in, from the past, let's say, that happened also in other vocabulary. So the, to be consistent with other vocabulary, so the idea is need to remove any external property that can point from any RDF resource towards uh, any other concept class of the core vocabulary. That's, in, let's say, it's a... Transversal, let's say, quite transversal to other components in, for consistency. Simply that, because we indeed we don't specify a, a major meaning of the such relation, uh, so uh, part of it, let's say, like we say, and so that's why we do uh, we propose the such removal. So I, I can repeat again, uh, uh, Natalie. Um, I saw your question passing through the chat. Uh, in the, in the diagram of the uh, core business, uh, the, uh, we create, uh, we create a, a simple relation from anything which is RDF resource, so anything that can be modeled uh, towards a legal entity. Uh, so the definition, the meaning of such relation is not indeed clear at all, uh, because we don't define if this relation means that such resource, do you see on the left of the relation, is part of a legal entity or part of. So that's why, and that's why indeed, since it's not clear, the idea is to remove such a broad relation in if, because it's not, con first of all, the meaning is not clear. And the second thing is not consistent with that, the rest of the core vocabularies. If we don't have use, such use cases, indeed, we should remove it. Okay. okay. No use case, so we move. But if I may, so for me, yeah. it's uh, it's sorry, yeah, I'm a bit. Yes. Uh, sure. It it is. We, we should know why we have had that. We we don't have the history, so it's difficult. Uh, if if the if it's used by somebody, we don't know. So it's. My, I have a problem saying we have to remove. I cannot see, and I think that Natalie cannot see either, and maybe there are none Indeed. here who can see, but uh, maybe there are people who use it. I don't know why was it, it's strange that it's there, so yeah. there must be a need behind, you see? So, but, but okay, if we have no one, uh, uh, you will create, I guess, uh, a, a new version of the core vocabulary, so it's Correct. other people will use the previous version and okay so it will not be uh, backward compatible that's all they can still technically be free to use it because it's still an an, an, uh, an, uh, an optional property ah, okay okay and anyhow it's from anything from any rdf resource towards legal entity so somehow uh, let's say people can if they want to they can still reuse it it's not a problem unless indeed uh, from 
let's say, perspective well, of semantic perspective, it doesn't make any sense. Let's say. But if we are all, all the people that are invited here, and normally they should have also an, an interest case if they want to bring it up to. Yes, it would be good for, so for the attendees to provide uh, us with the feedback on whether uh, they have a use case or they have a conflict with our proposition. And go next. Uh... Uh, may, may I add a comment here? I don't remember yes. if I am me opening this issue because I remember that I, I saw some property here that was not very clear and reading the definition, I asked myself it was not as part is part of, probably I me, <laughs> I, I need no, to it, check yes. on GitHub, okay. But if it is like that, I think a use case here, it's, uh, it's indeed available. I mean, you may say that, uh, there is a, some, some form of participation, let me say, of a company, but, if we are speaking about company, uh, of a company in another company, but also of a public organization in another um, company, for example. If it is like that, it's a use, an interesting use case. Yeah, but then indeed we need to define the real the use case and the meaning of it. That's I agree yes. with you, George, in that sense. But then if I don't have uh, now one for legal entity per se for such relation, which is indeed too broad. Uh, yeah. in, the, in, that, in that case, if, uh, we need to see if there are existing relations or mm -hmm. if we have to, uh, uh, let's say, to, uh, let's say for this such use case, or if we have need to specialize such a relation, uh, such property. When yeah. That's another evaluation <laughs> to be done, I would say. But uh, as the property per se is, uh, broad and also to make it consistent with other co-vocabularies where we don't link anything, let's say any RDF resource towards the main, let's say, concept oh. of the co-vocabularies. That's why the proposal for removal. Max, you want to say something? No, no, I, I just, uh, I was just uh, thinking uh, your, your comment that, that there are an enormous amount of ways that any resource can be related to a legal uh, entity, uh, the same way that persons can play a role in various uh, things. So uh, having something that is just very, very broad doesn't help anybody. And I think uh, that is one of the cases. And because we didn't have any use cases and we weren't aware of any usage of this property, uh, the cleanup proposal is to delete it because it might actually uh, not help people uh, implementing it. And people I see people are plus one is for removal. So I think we can take that and move on. Okay. And now that's uh, something that I would say it's related to the discussion that we are having before uh, on the issue. Yeah. 20, indeed, uh, uh, we we say we stated I would say that the core business vocabulary has a main entity legal entity. Uh, and let's say the issue say, well, okay, the name of a company doesn't reflect the main entity. Yeah. It's true that indeed the, we struggle, like Max said, because uh, all the terms of business per se is not defined in the vocabulary. Mm. Uh, so from thus, let's say uh, from here, we would like to propose the change basically to name of a company to core legal entity. Of course, this has a uh, minor impact on the repository name because now it's called uh, uh, indeed a core business. Uh, but the proposition of the, uh, indeed stays uh, to to change the core legal entity. That's uh, we can discuss indeed about it uh, yes. if there is a, indeed a, a way. And it's about basically what we're first of all need to uh, agree on is the definition of the yeah. uh, of the class, and then see class. if people agree that that is the right label for it or that we want to have a different label for it. Now, I, I just wanted to come back also on, on some of the discussion in the chat where people start questioning whether we should have two vocabularies, the core business and the core public organization. Now, this, this is something that uh, we probably need to kind of go back to uh, in the past because it has been done in the past. So in 19... In 2013, 2014, we decided that there was a case for having two vocabularies for them. And I think that's what we have now. So we're now working on also in this webinar on both vocabularies. There are overlaps, 
uh, there are yes. uh, people who have already uh, suggested to merge them. Uh, that is something that we can uh, really also uh, take into the consideration. I would say we can't take that into consideration at this point in time, because we're in a process of, uh, 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 let's say, cleaning them up. Uh, and I think that if we want to have a discussion about whether we should get rid of them, uh, and replace them by something that is also a subclass of formal organization, but is different from the two that we have, I would think, and, and uh, I'm looking at, uh, at Seth and Pavlina, uh, that we could actually plan to have that more fundamental discussion next year uh, and currently work with the definitions that we have now and make them as good as possible. We need can to you, oh, yeah, sorry, can you explain why it's not possible to to consider to re really to reconsider everything now? Is it because of the contract or is it no, because no, of no, uh... one of the things is these, these are existing vocabularies and these existing vocabularies have been used. So if we decide if we want to take a decision to get rid of the two that we have and replace them by a new one, then we have to really look very closely at what that means for existing implementations. Uh, and I think that is that is something that we can't do uh, between November and December this year, because that needs to be a, a fundamental redesign of it. And I'm looking at set to see what from the ISA standpoint uh, would be the approach there. No, I was just uh, running over to my colleague Miguel who uh made link with uh, EIDIS, so I'm afraid I, I missed a, uh, the discussion of the last two minutes. Okay, well, what I said is that we are not in a position at this point in time yeah. to make to take the decision to get rid of both the business vocabulary and the public organization vocabulary and the mm -hmm. new one. Uh, I and I said what, it, what we try to do now is make them as good as possible based on the definitions that we have. If there is a case for getting rid of the two and replacing them, that is a more fundamental discussion and we can't do that now. And Indeed. if we want to do that, we need to do that next year. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. so just timing wise, indeed, for lots of different reasons, well, we need to uh, wrap up the process or the, this common revision process that we're going through now for Christmas. And I think I, all of the, the arguments, uh, which were, uh, uh, voiced are very valid, but also as yeah. Max has just mentioned, we can't just in a flip of a or flip a switch and uh, make this type of uh, important decision. Uh, so I would say it's it is definitely something that we need to tackle, but then probably more something in 2022. And indeed, let's now then focus on I would say the uh, getting both. Uh, classes as clean as possible, keeping in the back of our minds that in the future or uh, starting from January, February, we can work on uh, kind of a roadmap to integrate them. But some of these decisions were made in the past for certain uh, for certain reasons, and I think it would be a little bit uh, dangerous to now all too quickly make this type of um, take this type of this, uh, decision. In order to, to make it as I uh, to complement it to set uh, uh, proposal uh, proposition uh, is that we needed to have a, a clear feedback from our stakeholders uh, uh, and uh, we encourage uh, our stakeholders uh, to put uh, uh, feedback into uh, GitHub. Uh, we can also uh, we can create a separate issue on uh, this, uh, but uh, we need, as uh, Max said, uh, to have a clear view. Uh, what uh, impact uh, would have uh, on the uh, on um, people that already using this? Uh, and uh, uh, since uh, EI does, uh, uh, is about uh, is on the revision uh, uh, process, I think, uh, and uh, Miguel can also uh, complement on this uh, or provide uh, his uh, feedback. Uh, we need. Uh, uh, would, uh, I think it will be a bit dangerous uh, to uh, change. Uh, uh, to merge, uh, to radically change those uh, two uh, vocabularies uh, without being uh, having um, 
a more stable also, uh, uh, position from uh, EIDAS uh, uh, regulation uh, uh, revision. So uh, the, this is a com quite a complicated uh, issue that uh, I think that this, it cannot be uh, tackled uh, uh, right uh, now. Uh, so we strongly encourage uh, you to provide a uh, uh, with us. I don't know whether somebody else would like to compliment on this. There's a point from Bert that uh, uh, we probably need to show how the different notions can be used together. So rather than concentrate, and I would say rather than concentrating on the names, and I see a lot of the uh, in, in the in the chat uh, on on the labels. I think we really need to look at what how these things work in practice. So maybe what we need to do, or maybe that's maybe also not what we can do in the next month or so. Uh, but we can try to to see in some cases, for example, an NGO in Italy, how do you describe them using those vocabularies or uh, so that it's it's also a little bit clearer to people how it works in practice, because one of the things that we're doing often in these uh, meetings is having sort of theoretical discussions about, but what if, and but if we can create an example of uh, one or two uh, cases, uh, using the two vocabularies that might help people to understand better at this point in time is probably uh, what we can do to uh, to help people understand better what we're trying to do. Okay. So, in the interest of time, uh, can we just uh, move and then we we'll leave this option, this this point open on the on the name. And we're trying to get to uh, the discussion on GitHub to see if we can reach a consensus. Yeah, go ahead. So, yes, the, this issue comes from the usage of per se of the, of the vocabulary. Um, in the core business vocabulary, use the location address as range in the relation legal entity registered address. So there is a relation indeed between legal entity and address, thanks to registered address uh, relation. Uh, we see the, also that in organization, in the organization ontology, the concept organization, which is super class of legal entity, etc., the address uh, is indefinitely uh, related via the site, uh, via the site uh, class. So you have the relation organization and site as a registered site. And they have another relation that to satisfy to arrive to address between site and address. So it's two step form. Uh, the EU business graph indeed make use of both by linking a registered organization to an entity, which is a site and uh, an address at the same time. So they, are, they were trying to indeed uh, solve this issue. Yeah, indeed the proposition is indeed uh, either to give the freedom to add the site and express complexity their own complexity, so there is uh, basically no change in, the in vocabulary. This has an impact on, uh, no impact on the vocabulary per se. Or remove the domain legal entity from register address as agreed in, in core location. So, uh, of course, which has the, Im the impact on the removing such a domain is that we need to change the definition of the property because talks about legal entity. So, in the domain of the register uh, address. Yeah. So, I come back to this issue here. Yeah. Uh, the idea indeed is to remove uh, the domain from registered address. Uh, let's say the second option here that you see is to remove the domain from registered address to be legal entity. And so it points only to, uh, towards uh, address per se as a second option. The first one is okay, we, uh, we give the possibility to use a site as we saw it in the organization ontology to link to an address and then express much more complexity because a site might have multiple address in the organization ontology. Uh, so that's an, a level of complexity that you can still uh, use, let's say, take all thanks to the organization ontology. Uh, and the second case, uh, like I said, we remove the legal entity from the domain. Um, any, let's say, both of them
me check. Oh. Can I? Uh, hi, it's no I, I, I'm having problems today. I don't know if it's me, but I, I, I really cannot picture what you're asking us here. Um, it would be for me much easier to have a visualization of what you're asking, it, but, saying. This is option one, this is option two, because words and jumping backwards and forwards from between slides, I find it very, very difficult. But maybe it's I, just me. I'll try, I'll try maybe, okay, I will explain better. Um, in the current vocabulary, we have a relation between legal entity and address. This relation is called registered address. The registered address uh, says that if you want to use such a relation, you, you need to be a legal entity on the left hand side, basically the relation. So, uh, in, on the opposite, let's say in the organ, 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 organization, if you want to use an address, you need to pass through a site, um, a, a site class. So, you have an organization which has a registered site, you can have different sites per se. And a site can have multiple others. That's how our organization has been set up. In our case, we simplify them because, in a way, to say, well, if you have an address, you just have a relation between legal entity and address. Now, um, the thing is, indeed, there are doubts from the people you the you business graph is what is really a site and what is an address. So, a site for the organization ontology can include multiple addresses. Because you have a site which is basically a certain building, which could have a different address. Because you, even the building or the site per se can be sub, huge enough that have you, you have, can have multiple addresses. So this is a complexity, of course, that certain organization might have in, in order to express their address. Uh, so the idea is either we basically we stay as it is. Let's say we don't change the vocabulary per se, and um, we give the possibility for an organization uh, to have, uh, let's say, we don't change anything, or basically we say we remove the legal entity, the domain from uh, uh, registered address. So you can have uh, not only the legal entity per se, but uh, another organization or another entity could have a registered address. From my understanding, also, uh, Emilio, the, the second here, yes. organization through the site, is what you can always do. That's yes, you can always do because indeed because it, it is uh, all of it is a uh, subclass of uh, of uh, org organization. So this is available. The only thing is that what we have now we have sort of a shortcut for legal entities directly indeed. to register address, and I think that's uh, I'm not quite sure why we would need to take out the domain because we are using it for the legal entity. If you take out a domain, you can also use it for a person, for example. But that is something that's outside of, of the. Of yeah, the but domain. if you if you remove indeed the domain, you and uh, you could use it for or uh, let's say organization at top level, because now it must be a legal entity person. Yeah, yeah. OK, so that's it, Simply... makes, it gives more flexibility to delete the domain. Indeed. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I am very, very confused, okay? But maybe it's me. For me, um, there is the registered, registered address of an organization. That is their legal address, yes. okay? And you have, they may have the various sites, okay? So this is the same for both a formal organization, uh, public and a business organization. Yes. So I do not understand why you would not have it from the full formal organization, a registered address and uh, a registered address and a site address. It would be much clearer for me, but, but I, I, it, I, I'm having real problems with this today. It's possible Sorry. already, uh, Natalie. It's possible. It's uh, the, such complexity can be expressed. I'm not, uh, indeed, today we can express the simplicity of the core vocabulary or the complexity that comes from org organization. So, That's sorry, why. What is the question? I, 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 to, I, I, I don't understand what you're asking us or what the difference is or anything. I mean, maybe I will just go quiet now because I am totally confused. Um, maybe okay. it's just me and uh, 
no one else has the same problem. Uh, the, the, the intention is, since the issue has been open, we would like to have a common agreement on the solving such issue. The, if we want to simply, uh, we can choose to not change the vocabulary or to give more freedom on the using the address. So if we want to basically, uh, 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 if we, we choose to not uh, to change, basically people are still, uh, can still, organization can basically use the site to, uh, to describe, to go through an address hmm, part. Uh, so they can express such complexity by using the organization ontology. If in the second option, we, if we want to change the vocabulary, we could basically um, remove the, the domain from the register address so other organizations' concept can use the register address in such a way. That's it. And as Brett says, both can actually work together. You can actually yeah. do either the yeah. one or the, the either can use the shortcut or you can do the full uh, chain that is uh, defined by organization. That, that is actually the, the goal of the proposal. And eh? so the, the, the challenge is, is that do we have to choose upfront what is the address of the organization, of the legal entity? Actually, you, we can avoid that this kind of discussion, at least at the level of core organization, uh, the core vocabulary, in the sense that there are two possibilities available. It's up to the implementers to choose what they prefer or what are the organization, the, the setting of that uh, register or data exchange. So you can use both either the site address or either the registered address. And the additional proposal is, is to open up registered address to use it for any entities um, so that this can be used in yes. the more global sense. I see that Jim is in agreement with removing the domain. And we're also seeing there is a discussion about whether a site is physical and whether an address is, needs to be real or virtual. And I think that's sort of beyond what we're trying to do here. Uh, what the site is defined as is a part of the organization ontology uh, and also the way that they uh, link to addresses. and. A, a virtual address is not, I think, uh, the address of a uh, solicitor. So an address is an address is a label for a physical site. Now the org organization is also a little bit vague on that because they have a note that, well, it doesn't have to be really uh, uh, real, uh, but I think that's also, uh, they make things more confusing uh, in that sense on uh, what, what exactly addresses. But that is a discussion, I think, that fits with uh, the W3C's definitions of the, or, uh, the organization ontology and not in what we're doing here. I think uh, we need to keep the discussion on what we're trying to achieve here and not how W3C has defined it. Although, of course, there might be confusion from the definitions at W3C, but then we try to, in usage notes uh, try to explain how we're uh, using them in our core vocabulary. Okay. Okay, and the shark makes the point also that address versus resident address versus site versus contact point, there needs to be some uh, 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 explanation uh, on, on how those things relate. Can you switch to the proposal slide, please? Yeah, just show me. Hi. But Max, the key question is then if there are sufficient business or use cases which justify to do things differently in between both uh, core vocabularies. That's the key point that we try to answer. No, I'm not sure that's the question. The question here is about the core legal entity, the core business. Do we have, how do we express the registered address? That would also, of course, uh, uh, apply to the, uh, the public 
uh, mm. organization. But that's not the question here. The question here is, do we have, have a shortcut to uh, the address from the legal entity? There is also the way to do that with more complexity through the uh, org organization, the, the org uh, uh, organization ontology, and the proposition is to keep both of them. And I have already seen two people in agreement with removing the domain. Sorry, but this registered address is defined in the core location, correct? So it's in the namespace of the core location vocabulary, correct? It's it's in the names, yeah, it's it as well overlaps with core location, uh, Georgia. Uh, mm -hmm. In the sense that uh, the proposal in there was to make that more generic there to keep it mm -hmm. from a resource to an address so that you can say this address has been registered in some system and then you could apply it to anything. And that's actually the ap application here too. It's saying, okay, here in this case uh, um, for the legal entity, the domain is in kind of specific and we will lift the domain uh, so that uh, it will be aligned with core uh, location. Yeah, so if it is defined in the core location, as you said, I see that uh, there is no point of discussion here because it's uh, for anything. And then you use this property yes. uh, in the core business. So yeah. Attached yeah. directly to the legal entity. Uh, or whatever he's called it, so that to have a direct uh, link to the physical address, probably. Yes, and indeed, and then we still have still the two options. Huh? So you can use it directly. Yeah, and also you can use the site from org. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, yes. yeah, this is a uh, general scenario that I like, yeah, personally. And then that's, uh, let's say, the proposition one will fit in at the end because then you can reuse what exists there if you want to have more complex or other ways to connect to another. Okay. Okay, uh, I think we can go forward. Go forward. Um, uh, this issue is uh, connecting the basically uh, in the uh, basically in, uh, legal entity with his own identifier. We see in this uh, in this picture that the legal entity uh, is connected with the identifier class from ADMS. Uh, so uh, and the, the same for uh, we had the same issue, let's say for core person, you know, uh, where the idea is to link an identifier with its issuing authority. Now, in the, uh, if you look at the identifier part, or, uh, we see that the issue author in your eye is mapped to uh, the city creator, which has a range uh, in your eye. So while no, uh, this the city creator per se, in the, in its own definition, is range the city agent. So uh, the proposition, it's just one, you know, uh, simply uh, specialize, um, uh, the issuing authority uh, with the, to the original meaning. So, issuing authority has uh, uh, current URI as a range, but uh, of course it depends on the MS relation, which is under W3C, because uh, it's ADMS is managed by W3C. On the other hand, DCT, uh, we say that DCT agent and FOF agent are not formally stated as equivalent in both direction. So, if I go back here, the issuing authority uh, URI, which is again mapped to the city creator. Uh, we could, uh, the idea is indeed uh, to specialize, to have a, a basically a range, not only any URI, which could be anything. Um, because now uh, it is in the case, as you see in the, in the diagram, issuing authority URI as URI as well. Um, so the, the idea indeed is to uh, use, uh, let's say, more meaning in the short term of URI. So not, we don't link necessarily to um, um, any URI, but we would like to link to a FOOF agent.
And yeah, George it, notes that the identifier can be a class of the general model of agents. And I think yeah. it's clear that all the subclasses of agents uh, can have uh, these uh, these identifiers. That's true. Which means that you can use it in all the vocabularies that are under the uh, the agent class. Indeed, indeed, that's uh, the intention. Indeed. And the idea is that they're then all the same definition of the uh, identifier, which is the ADMS identifier. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay, this is uh, an issue indeed. Uh, if we want to, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, it's uh, an issue that tackles in core business and core public organization. Mm. Uh, we already state that indeed the core business and core public organization are both organization having different legal forms, uh, which overlaps uh, somehow and might share some classes. Uh, we saw uh, because some classes are change event, contact point, etc. So, uh, indeed, the idea is, of course, uh, we will consider that such class when there is a real need, when there is a business case for it. I'm not saying it's possible right now. If people want to use a contact point, a change event, it's it's still possible at this moment in time. But adding uh, um, in the in the class, yes, it's, it could be possible, not a problem. But there must be a real a need, a case for it. Simply stated by uh, opening GitHub issue, it's it's, a, it's possible right now. So then we take on by adding the relative class. I think the, the, the main proposal here is not to start adding things unless there is a real use case that can be defined and can be described. Uh, and that was uh, related to my earlier comment that we sometimes we tend to have theoretical discussions but we really want to uh, make changes to these vocabularies only when there is a real use case for them. So and that is also Simply in this case, uh, and I, I think we're we're going to get to that point uh, also in the next year when we are going to look uh, at the uh, relationship between these uh, between the vocabularies. Okay. And now, uh, having said all about uh, this core business vocabulary, we focus on the core public organization vocabulary. So there are some issues open on, on the public organization. And uh, with this section, we are going to see what's uh, what we need to take over here. Now, I recall the diagram of the core public organization. Let me close the chat here. You know. Uh, where indeed the public organization is uh, in the middle, and we have a uh, different, uh, let's say, concept all around connected to it, like identifier, contact point, um, or even a change event, if you see on the left hand side. And, uh, and an organization indeed is, uh, has, a, let's say, different relation with other type of. Uh, so we are going to take all this. Um, into the next next issues. So. Um, in this issue, um, the we see that in the public organization, uh, this diagram of the public organization is connected with a change event. The change event class in turn is connected with uh, it's basically was connected with already uh, a CPSV peak formal framework. We already take all this. Um, somehow the use the reuse of legal resource from LI ontology. Um, the only doubt left is basically it's always uh, a legal act being, uh, let's say, the sort of formal framework for such change events or not. If it's, let's say, uh, uh, the case, we can still keep it a legal resource every time. If not, we need to consider, we need to have, let's say, uh, another type of discussion yeah, to say, do we need 
only to have legal resource or not simply that's the question so there was a question from shark what a change event is and i just put in the chat yeah. the definition of it but it's quite broad class uh, we uh, what we depict here in the diagram is the main let's say event that can happen to an, an organization which is a foundation event um basically, basically which uh, uh, say triggers the creation of the public organization per se so uh, just to give an example mm, uh, but it's also uh, fundamental i would say as a type of class so the change event uh, any event basically from uh, concerning to the change the nature of public organization as needs always to be a legal act that's the, the then the question And I think we've heard from other people that, yes, there is also always a legal act that establishes a, a, a public organization. Yes, uh, change events, they, they are also ap applicable to businesses, to organizations in general. They are not... Uh, and but they would not be uh, yes so they, they they would be at a higher level not for public organizations only okay so that's a, that's a proposal to to move the change event to a different level because in this case the change event is related to legal resource uh, but in the change event for organizations for businesses would not be related to legal act. That's the uh, that's the difference. I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, that's, so that's we're not sure. So that's something that we need to further investigate. I think. But in the case, the, the proposal here, that in the case of a public organization, the uh, the link to uh, should be to a ELI legal resource, and not just to a more general formal framework. Okay, so yeah, that's it's it's in the in the chat. We're talking about whether it's an act or a law, and we're talking here. The proposal is to the uh, ELI legal resource as a legal act. Yeah, so I think it's because the 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 act is a legal resource, but it's not ELI'd, or you know, there is no. It's not so easy to to consider that all these acts would uh, be uh, formalized through an ELI resource. So that's the problem. To look, uh... Okay, that was, that was the question. If if people think that there are cases where those uh, legal uh, things are not. ELI legal resources, then we need to make it more general, and it is currently a uh, formal framework, which could be acts, but also could be other things. In, in okay. the, the, the comment of, of Cecilia, I heard some expectation, and I don't know if this is true. Uh, we are reusing ELI legal resource, the URI with its definition behind it. Uh, but is the expectation that this ELI legal resource is always um, expressed in the URL form and the URI form of uh, the ELI URI specification? Because that's something, a different expectation. Yeah. So if that is always imposed and connected with the ELI legal resource, then probably it's a very narrow set yeah. that you can use. If it's yes, precisely. Uh, so I think it's also Georgia says that uh, it's better to have a, a general, more general uh, mod, model for the to express the legal framework that is behind. ELI is too narrow, especially if we move it to the to the organization. We move the change event to the organization. Yeah. 
level. Okay, well, I think that makes. Okay, in that uh, argument, then if that is a change, is it acceptable? We have in TCCEP uh, a generic uh, uh, class called reference framework, which was introduced exactly to avoid uh, to, to, to as a broader uh, class to cover uh, kind of all kind of frameworks. Um, uh, is that a good proposal to as an alternative then? Yeah. That would then be the uh, alternative and a reference framework in CCEV is defined as just a source from which requirements are identified and there can be legal and non-legal specifications, including yep. procedures, tendering, legislation, etc. So that would be the more general one. And then to make it more general, we could go for the reference framework. Yep. And Georgia is, and I see Cecilia is in a And I don't think, uh, uh, Maya, that there is a formal relationship between reference framework and ELI resource, legal resource. I don't think there's that no, has been no. defined. No, at this moment, not. So there's no. no subclass relationship. So only from the definition side, you could expect that. Yeah, yeah you could expect that. Okay, so uh, Maya suggests that we could make it a statement in the reference framework definition that an ELI would be something that is uh, would be a good way of identifying it. Yeah. So, so, so this is, I think, as well of the topics of of the the next webinar where we try to bring the things together, um, and then this kind of uh, let's say. Closely related classes might uh, be shown. To complement to this and to address it to uh, George's uh, uh, comment or to uniform or core vocabularies, this is exactly our purpose to provide a consolidated diagram with the interdependencies between all vocabularies uh, and uh, try to identify some conflicts uh, and uh, try to see whether we need to adapt. Uh, uh, specific uh, classes like the one that uh, we are uh, discussing uh, right now to find uh, uh, a common uh, uh, definition and understanding uh, and uh, uh, see not have uh, not having any conflicts uh, and uh, different approaches uh, to different uh, to similar classes. Okay, that point noted. Uh, shall we move on? Yeah, sure. The, in this class, uh, as we see also in the diagram, uh, talks about the administrative territorial units. Uh, you see that a public organization uh, should be, and now it's already affected the diagram over there, but uh, it's linked to an administrative territorial unit. And not, now uh, it's linked through a spatial relation, and the issue, uh, let's say, in the, the agreed part is that yes, but the in reality, the link between the public organization and administrative unit, it's on the jurisdictional level. So there, there should be a jurisdictional relation side. And the proposition is first of all uh, put the class name on the singular side, as usually. Uh, it's the case in all uh, classes in Kovacovli, so we, use, uh, we tend to use singular to express, the, let's say, uh, such class and change the spatial relationship into the uh, jurisdictional one. We don't conflate, indeed, the nuts with the administrative territorial units, also because nuts simply are not mentioned in the vocabulary. Um, and also, we are going since it's not anymore spatial relation. We are going to delete the relationship between administrative unit and the geometric class. If I go back quickly on the original thing, you see that on the original diagram, you see that the public organization is linked to, with a spatial with the administrative unit, and with administrative unit is connected with the geometry and with the geometry. And can you can you point the to where we people should look because it's hard to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was uh, the beginning. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah, sorry. In the, I don't know if there is a way. I can see your pointer. 
an annotated path term. So here you have the public organization, which is linked with uh, administrative territory unit yeah. on the bottom right through a spatial relation. Hmm? Yeah. And administrative territory unit is connected with the geometry class yeah. via uh, the, the geometry uh, relation. Hmm? Yeah. So now in the issue that we are discussing here, uh, stop the, the annotating part and, and the next. Uh, the proposal is to, first of all, change in nature, to put singular in the class name, yeah. uh, administrative territory unit and not units. Second thing is to change the jurisdiction relation. It's more a jurisdictional relation than a spatial relation. Um, and basically we don't, uh, we, since it's not any more spatial, we don't, we remove the relationship between administrative territory units and the geometry class. Definitely, this has, of course, an impact on URI because we need to uh, create this property jurisdiction replaced, uh, let's say, instead of spatial relation. Any comment there? I lost my chat. Okay. I see that people are in agreement with the purpose with the proposition. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not sure that nuts is only for statistical reasons. So isn't it? I, I don't know, but uh, it is okay. It has been built for this reason, but on the on the relationships that I don't know between an administrative unit and uh, nuts, and is it? I, I I don't know, but maybe in the in the room there are people who know. Uh, nuts is for statistical purposes. That's the I think the S in the nuts. So, therefore, we didn't want to make it dependent. Uh, because we're talking about jurisdiction and not about uh, statistical information. They might coincide, but, but how, not necessarily. How, so how are the jurisdictions identified? This is how are they identified? Uh, that depends a little bit also on the usage. Uh, different countries might have different ways of doing that. Okay, I see many plus ones. I think there is a, again here, a point that we need to clarify uh, the, uh, the the class and what it re represents. Uh, but the idea here is that the link between the public organization and the territory unit is one of jurisdiction and not one of spatial. Yeah, that's what we wanted to highlight here. Okay, I go next. Uh, side, you know, um, already, I already uh, talked before, but we uh, go back to also to, to this point. Um, in the vocabulary, we see this in, in the diagram. We have the public organization, which is indeed connected to um, a change event class from the organization ontology. Um, so far in the diagram, what we depict is the foundation event as a subclass of a change event. This is because indeed. Uh, not purely as, as it is an example, but a public organization cannot exist un unless it has uh, been founded. Hmm? Some legal statement we're saying. So the thing, the thing is, the request has been raised. But uh, do we uh, have uh, be maybe keep sufficient to have only one class, subclass, or uh, which is the foundation class, or we have multiple ones? Hmm? So. Uh, the proposition on our side is needed to keep the change event and foundation event for such a, a existence, a reasonable existence. Mm -hmm. So, because foundation event is needed, per se. If people basically, if organizations want to extend the uh, change event to create a new type of events, they, of course, um, 
free to free to do it. But the idea, at least, that the foundation event should be at least there. Okay. So I have a question. Why would you have a, a specialization of a, for foundational event or not allow to have in the vocabulary uh, an event type, a change event type that would encompass more, uh, would allow to, to support? I, I don't see it. No, it's not there. So uh, because there are many, um, many use cases around like merger or uh, yeah. uh, so that, that would the benefits of a core vocabulary uh, change event type. So why do you highlight the foundational event only? Because in it, there is no, um, I mean, I'm aware in it, there are mergers or splitters or, uh, but the, there is no, uh, let's say, as uh, far as we know, there is no real, uh, let's say, definition of those in a way stated way. Um, where we can classify, because in such a case, if we want to create a type for change event, we need to create basically the, then there should be um, a control vocabulary for this. Uh, so that's, I, let's say. It's not sure. Yeah. You could have a type and no control vocabulary, then there are, there are legal acts that already uh, give uh, some of those vocabularies, like in the BRIS legislation, you have, it has been classified. But it's not for all, uh, well, it's not for public, it's for organizations. Uh, it's also true that we don't have them for public or private. We don't, there are variations, but we, okay. it is not because you define the type that you need the control vocabulary for them. Okay. Uh, if, if I can say, so we had, there was a quite a big discussion in the previous version of the, of the vocabulary where it was very strongly uh, made the, uh, the, 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 the argument that a change event changes something from one place to the other, from one state to another. And a foundation event doesn't have a pre state. It is just, it starts something. And it was felt that this, this is uh, uh, semantically different from a change. And therefore there is this uh, subclass foundation event because people felt that it couldn't be a type of change. That is why it was there. And the question is that we have, shall we leave it there or shall we uh, take it out? Uh, it's always possible to add other classes, uh, subclasses of change event if necessary. Uh, so far we have only had this one as a general one that everybody agreed on. So it yeah, makes it I easier to. Okay. okay, so I am trying to, to see the use case that it supports that it makes it easier to identify the event of uh, creation of a, an organization. Huh? Yeah. It's easy. You just go through the foundation event and then you have the time, the date and time when it was uh, created, yeah. founded. So yeah. it's this is if it's a very common use case and this I cannot tell you, then it's why not? Max, can I add a comment here? Yes. I, I think uh, here we are reasoning uh, on this point because we are within the core public organization vocabulary. But we said in the chat and uh, in the discussion that probably the change event applies also to yeah. the organization in general. So if we move change event, uh, which is an event, okay, in general, um, to the general model, okay, then, as some people are saying here, we can, for the specific public organization part, use this foundational event only, okay? That is probably not a subclass of change event because some, some people here, Peter says that they tend to agree, change event is for change in existing, change something that yeah. already exists, okay? So probably a foundational event is not a change event. It's another type of event, okay? That is specific for the public organization because it makes sense 
uh, telling uh, from a legislation point of view that yeah. the organization which is public is born. Uh, so if we reason about moving this change event in the general model, uh, and probably the foundational event is only part of this, which is not a change event. So I think we need to oh. see this modeling uh, using also the general model. Although I think uh, you're right, but I think that if we talk about foundation event, I'm, I'm, yeah, it, we could actually say it's not a subclass of change event, it's, it's uh, something in its own right. But also for legal entities, uh, there are uh, establishments, events uh, that are also have specific uh, specific properties uh, like dates and uh, and those kind of things. So uh, let's let's just say that uh, yes, let's keep the foundation event. Uh, let's add uh, some of the properties uh, to it, and then remove the subclassing to. To change to change event and to make it a, a a class in its own right. Okay. Next. Okay. Sorry, I, I just added in the chat something. So, but uh, uh, do we want to have change event, or is it sufficient to have event? It's uh, I, I, I we don't have the dis definitions here, so it's a bit difficult. But if it was event, then we could still keep the, the specialization of foundation event. No, we're not, we not. But that was not the proposal to have a more general event. We, okay. we, we talk about the change event and the foundation event here. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Yep. Now, this issue is, in, let's say, concerns not only core public organization, but it's also, it's in consistent way with other uh, core vocabularies. The idea is that, um, especially for a core public organization, uh, to remove dependency from schema.org. Uh, schema.org is used in core public organization, as you can see, um, to depict uh, the concept of contact point with its own opening hour specification, but also to link with the schema image object. Yeah. Now, uh, of course, uh, over here, uh, oh, let's say, sorry, I'll go next one. But over here, the, uh, just, is just to say, we are going to, of course, if we want to remove such dependency, we need to re uh, replace classes in the core vocabulary namespace. So, which means that we need to create a new array to define such concept. The concept will stay the same. Huh? We are not going to remove the concept, but it's the removal of the namespace from schema.org that will change. So that's basically, uh, uh, let's say we are working on it and uh, we'll update this diagram with the next release. Okay, Georgia, is there agreement? Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, an issue concerning the, uh, uh, let's say, the public organization class, which is. Um, can, can class. I yeah, sorry. comment from on the schema.org from Peter yes. Brun Anderson? That from now on, SEMIC will never reuse a vocabulary where schema.org is used. And I think uh, what we've said is that those classes, those properties, uh, we can actually uh, have them ourselves because we don't have any influence over schema.org. But I'm not quite sure what you mean, Peter, by never reuse a vocabulary where schema.org is used. That's sort of a, a two step that you're mentioning here. Argument, but cannot uh, don't have imprints over schema at all. Yeah. Uh, goes for a lot of uh, vocabularies. Uh, some vocabularies do reuse schema at all. Which one, for example? Well, I can't remember now, but I'm, I've seen it uh, now and then. Um, in, in general, I think the argument, but you don't have uh, influence over schema at all, is uh, is not a valid argument for not using schema.org um, and if you do if you decide as you apparently do uh, 
to skip uh, schema.org and create your own, please remember to uh, uh, make a, a statement about uh, equality. Yeah, that's, so that was a, a comment that was made also by the manager of schema.org, Dan Brickley, that uh, whenever we can uh, uh, provide links to uh, schema.org, the classes or properties, but not just for these three that we're showing here, but for uh, uh, also, for example, for uh, a class like person that there is a link to schema.org. And uh, that's uh, something that we that we want to do, but we don't want to make ourselves in the core vocabularies dependent on schema.org. Thanks, Max. And let me just kind of highlight that I, people have different opinions on this topic and it's important to discuss this. But do know that we plan um, in with the SAMIC action in 2022, also in the uh, let's say in the first and the second quarter, uh, we will let's say reinvestigate the, um, the relationships with other initiatives. And of course, flaskima.org is uh, the biggest player or one of the the biggest players. So. Well, I fully agree with what Max uh, said, but it's important also to uh, to do uh, to understand that this is on our agenda, and it's not just a kind of a black and white situation. Um, we will definitely allocate resources to, uh, and also try to to be closer in touch with uh, with the people steering uh, schema.org. So that at the end of the day, for the the end users and the stakeholders, we minimize impact. Voila. I don't know if someone else wants to um, uh, address this, or if I think the key message I wanted to bring is that we'll uh, focus on this specific point also uh, in the in two thousand twenty two. To address also to uh, Sebastian the comment about uh, uh, the gender, uh, there is a longer discussion uh, uh, with a specific, uh, 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 of a specific uh, working group uh, regarding uh, gender and uh, sex. So uh, this uh, uh, the outcome of uh, this uh, group will uh, be published. Uh, by the end of uh, the year, uh, so uh, we will adapt uh, our definition and a usage uh, node, uh, taking under consideration their decision. So that's it's uh, work still to be done on on person, and in the interest of time, I think we should move on. Um, what we already discussed uh, before is that the, as already stated, basically the, the public organization for, for public organization uh, is a subclass, uh, let's say, of uh, the, let's say, the, the proposition is that uh, to have a public organization, a subclass of org organization instead of org organization. So per se, this doesn't have uh, an impact uh, because it's a race of class. So there is no, there is no real need to change the class per se. Uh, so the proposition indeed to leave it as it is because that's the, at the end, the, as a public organization inherits basically all the properties, all the relations modeling wise, semantic wise from the other classes in the, in the hierarchy. Unless there is any particular reason that we, uh, why we should change such behavior. I can go back, uh, maybe a, a, the di a diagram could depict well. No, I don't see any comments here. I got a little bit lost, which is the, the proposal uh, here is to change. Not, to not okay. change anything, uh, let's say, don't, don't change anything, uh, basically. Because changing the subclass doesn't have any, an impact. So there is a no real need to change the class. So the, the currently public organization is subclass of, I don't remember, org organization directly. Yes. Okay. So it may be in the, yes, you see here in the genetic diagram on the right hand side, you have org organization here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
so the idea is not changing the subclassing relation because it doesn't have any, any impact, let's say, unless there is a real need or specific real uh, need per se. Simply that. And, and can you sh share uh, where formal organization appears in the legal entity? Um, I, I don't know if it's too difficult because we are short of time, but I think yeah. it may be. I need to. to uh, I think if I go back to the original diagram, but the original diagram, I have to fix it. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I need to fix this diagram, so I think it's we cannot discuss over this the, this okay. diagram here. Uh, but simply, the, uh, let's say the subclassing. Uh, uh, let's say at the end we inherit all the properties. Um, to part. So it, unless there is a real need, uh, a particular reason, I, I would say I will. We will still keep to the to the basically to the what we have. Let, let's let's move this discussion also to what we said about this original diagram to make sure that we have the right relationships in the diagram and explain why they're there. And then uh, we can discuss whether for uh, elegancy reasons we want to change things because what you're, you're right, uh, uh, Emilio, for implementations, it really doesn't make any difference what the subclass is because we define the properties in our own classes. So that's, a bit, but I think it would make sense to have a short document that actually explains uh, the relationship between the various classes. And Batalia also said, visualize the two diagrams side by side, and that's what I'm proposing to have that yeah, yeah. short document that explains that. It will, indeed, it will help. I will fix yeah. that, that, that the original one, and, and uh, it, anyhow, it will be part of the next webinar, or, let's say, on the next yeah. work to be done. Um, on this, oh, yeah, in this issue, we discuss uh, about the change event class. We already stated this before. Uh, the change event, as uh, we saw already in the picture before, uh, two properties, start time and time, um, where the definition is for start time is the time at which the changed event started, and the end time is the time at which the changed event ended. Um, so it's Quite difficult to change such a definition. Uh, it's been difficult to read it uh, because con the concept of time is already primitive per se. Um, so the proposition here that's uh, below the start time is the time instant where the, when the event the change in organization is deemed to be to have been started, and uh, and the time uh, let's say is equivalently in a way it's the time instant when the event the change in organization is deemed to have been ended. More, let's say, any, let's say, proposition that uh, keeps, uh, let's say, more clarify, uh, it's all more than welcome, but I would say we tried already our best to try to to have a better definition. Uh, it's linked in, let's say, linking the start and time with event person and organization, which is the, the main concept here, because we want to link an organization with event in the definition. I see Anna. Has raised her hand. Sorry, this that was for the previous issue. So I think you've moved on since then. Um, yeah. We'll just like you to draw the attention again to the discussion that's going on. So clearly, regarding the yeah. uh, specialization of, of of organization, there is some need for clearer semantics. Um, but you've moved on, so I'll, I won't go okay. into it again. Okay, but we can copy the discussion. Uh, uh... Say if there is an end point, we can still keep the discussion. Um, I make a proposal in the chat because I don't like, uh, I don't appreciate uh, the definitions that just repeat what what is in the in the name of in the label of the property. So, yeah, yeah we were a little bit uh, uh, hindered there also by the definitions. Because so I propose the time instant when the state of the organization update was initiated. I think, it's, I, think I like it better, and, and the the other one would be the update was terminated. Yes. Yeah. Then we can. Can, can you see it again? Sorry. No, this is uh, the change. The time instant when the uh, state of the organization update was initiated. Okay. If well, you can actually update. leave that out and say the time instant that the update was initiated. Yeah. Well, the moment. Well, 
moment, yeah. okay. With the, with the change was initiated. Uh, so initiated and terminated instead of uh, started and ended. Initiated and terminated, okay. Okay, let's, let's move. Yes, let's move on. Uh, counterpoint content info. Um, here it's uh, a need uh, to express basically content info under uh, the core recovery namespace. Uh, it's uh, an issue that tackles, uh, as you can see, uh, both core personal and core public organization part. We are uh, basically working to define the contact info class per se, uh, which uh, in the discussion, by the way, will follow on, on the core personal under issue 36 there, where we define a minimum, uh, let's say, and of course this will be triggering different type of discussion, but we are defining such class where contact info will uh, have the minimum um, type of information uh, that express a contact info. So, uh, like in this case, address, email, name, telephone, and type also of contact. So that's, uh, we are working on this, on this side in order to homogenize basically the, the core vocabularies having one unique class for this. So the discussion will follow over there, just to say. I see there is a proposal to have also uh, the web address and uh, that we can add. And what it's called, maybe we call it a home page or something like that, but uh, we can add that property. Okay. Yeah, yeah, anyhow, uh, we try to keep the minimum. Uh, of course, people can always add up, but uh, of course, we, but are, we have a good discussing. couple of good suggestions, yeah, I yeah. think. It makes sense a website, a Twitter account, a Facebook page, those kind of things. Okay. We, we can anyhow bring the discussion of the dot issue and then issue co person 36 and add them all. The, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that indeed there can be different cases. I move forward though. Capture those things in the, in the chat with the yeah. suggestions. Okay. Uh, that's a, we already discussed this. Yeah, we've got a point that we uh, yeah. when we're reusing things from W3C, we're bound to use the Z, but if we yeah. do it ourselves, we use the British gun. Yeah, so basically I can go for faster on this. So we are using the British English and not an American one. So we keep this in the naming rules that we already, I said it already before. So to use British English instead of the American English. Um, and here, um, the, the last two issues that are left for uh, uh, for this vocabulary, it's the uh, let's say the object property um, I, that we have in, uh, in CPOV. It's the uh, the property identifier uh, going from public organization to class identifier. Um, it's now defined as the uh, org identifier, and that uh, according to the request, it should be an IDMS identifier. So, if we look at the definition of org identifier property and the IDMS identifier property, the org identifier property brings. Can I can I interrupt you? I, yes. I'm sorry because yes, I, sure. I was a bit uh, too slow, but I think there okay. is a problem by yes. by having contact info in the core dealt with by the core person vocabulary because it is not really uh, linked to a person. It is more. Uh, it can be. It can be completely de, uh, de personified, yes, yes, so it should not be in the core person vocabulary. It should be dealt with by the core uh, by the core organization vocabulary, and then sometimes there might be a person behind it. But it's it's really a, a side. Uh, you, you understand, and especially yeah, nowadays, the, that uh, the everything is, was... is uh, 
originally Digitalized. open. Yes, yeah, no, I totally understand you. First yeah. of all, we don't have a repository where we have cross reference thing, let's say. And the issue, the original issue was open in core person side. So okay. I kept the, the creation of core person 36 here. It's okay. referencing both CPUV and core person. So there is, we don't lose track of this, definitely. Okay, but it will and, affect core, uh, core organization vocabulary. Indeed, as well, yes, okay. because okay, it's okay. an issue on 16, yes. Okay, yes. sorry, sorry for taking. No, no, no problem. The, of course, we try to keep the definition as uh, generic possible to, in order to accommodate uh, the, the other vocabularies between now. So, not a problem here. Um, so, uh, coming back to this one, um, so the property identifier, which now is identified as org identifier between public organization and, uh, and the class identifier. Um, in the request, it's instead that it's wrong, it should be being the IDMS identifier property. Now, if we look at the definition of org identifier and the IDMS identifier, the definition of org, org identifier is much more complete per se, uh, where we state it's that it gives an identifier such as a company registration number that can be used to individually identify the organization. So while the IDMS identifier is just simply the, with a the scope to link to an IDMS identifier class. So the propos our proposition is to keep the using org identifier with the range literal per se, so we can uh, still keep in using it uh, towards uh, identifier. <clears throat> no, you can't. I'm sorry, but you can't. Okay. If you look at the diagram, the, the uh, property I'm talking about is the one that goes from the class public organization to the class identifier. Correct. Uh, yeah. That yeah. is an object book. identifier, and that is the ADMS identifier. It cannot be a data type. I go back here. Uh... Yes, this this property we are, we are talking about. Yes, so. yeah, it has to be the ADMS identifier. It's true because it's not a literal on the other on the on the other. Okay, well, then it's okay. We can use ADMS identifier. We should use IDMS identifier if we want to link it to the structured identifier defined by ADMS. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. And Georgia says, indeed, if we fix the identifier in the general model, then it should be. Uh, every all agents should have an identifier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The last one. The last one is uh, purely typo. Uh, there was uh, O small capital O in the let's say in the rare DF expression of the core vocabulary. Uh, so of course we are going to fix the typo and we we take also the rare DF expression into the HTML specification that could be it will be visible anyhow. Uh, this realization, the colloquial realization, will be ended in, in the last webinar. So it's uh, uh, because now the main of it is uh, expressed as RDF per se. So anyhow, we are going to fix the typo. Let's say that's for sure. And that's it. Well, let's say on the general changes, changes for core business and core uh, and core public organizations. So now that's simply a wrap up. I, I think we will. There is quite a lot of discussion. I think that we have to have to skip over in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, yes. Please, please, we will uh, take into account all the comments there. And there is a couple of things I think that would need some follow up from our side uh, in terms of uh, explanations. And there, I think there is some of them that we really need to have a look at uh, in the next uh, week and come back to the group with some additional proposals uh, for uh, the, the issues that were raised here in, in the chat. So, uh, uh, Pavlina, you want to do the wrap up? Yes, I will do the wrap up. First of all, I would like uh, to thank all uh, the participants for the uh, comments. Uh, they are very valid uh, uh, and valuable uh, ones. Uh, uh, we encourage you to continue the discussion in the GitHub. Uh, 
uh, we will uh, uh, appreciate if you could uh, provide the feedback uh, for core passion and core location to it, uh, until the 23rd of November, uh, along with the uh, the two vocabularies that uh, that uh, we discussed uh, today, uh, we all of uh, see the need uh, of what uh, it was uh, um, uh, presented. Uh, it was uh, said uh, at the beginning of uh, the webinar of a consolidated diagram. Uh, we will provide you um, and the an original we will put into GitHub before the the, the second of uh, uh, December the previous diagram that uh, has a concatenation of all vocabularies as well as uh, the consolidated uh, diagram with uh, uh, discussions uh, that uh, were um, uh, uh, that uh, the proposals uh, that uh, were uh, uh, expressed during uh, the the fourth uh, the four uh, webinars uh, in order uh, to provide uh, a consolidated uh, diagram so with uh, uh, depicting the changes along with the uh, issues uh, that are uh, the conflicting issues uh, uh, that uh, we are going uh, to uh, discuss. We will highly appreciate uh, your feedback uh, on the data modeling uh, rules uh, that uh, uh, we put into GitHub so that uh, um, we can also uh, uh, identify issues uh, uh, that uh, are related uh, to uh, the updated the, the, the definitions that uh, will come up uh, based on um, the uh, the proposals that were uh, made uh, during uh, the four uh, webinars. Uh, we also uh, it is our Ivan our uh, it is uh, on, uh, we wanted to create some uh, rules regarding some general guidelines uh, for serialization that was previously uh, mentioned uh, if they exist by. Um, I don't recall, uh, sorry, the name of the person that uh, was uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, so, uh, please uh, provide us uh, with uh, your feedback in order uh, to have uh, uh, a fruitful uh, discussion on uh, the 2nd uh, of uh, uh, December. And we will also uh, create uh, some issues in the GitHub uh, in order uh, based on the discussion uh, that uh, we had uh, today. So that's it from my side. Uh, I would like to thank you of all, all of you for participating, uh, and, uh, um, and do not forget. Uh, uh, we will also remind you of uh, our um, uh, conference on the eighth of uh, uh, December. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye.